All praise, glory, and honor is most certainly due to the Most High God of the Patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to you in the name of His Son. I kind of treat it with blessing each and every single time that I can come before you to preach the Word of God. Never do I kind of as a light thing to do so. My name is Elisha Yisrael. This is my, my brother, Brother Austin. He's going to be reading for me today. And today we're going to be talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. You know, it is in common Christian thought that uh, the Lord is going to take somebody to heaven. Man, you will ever, forever be with the Lord in the heaven of heavens. And many people don't realize that all over this book, this book is telling you about a kingdom that's going to be established here on this earth. And that's what we want to talk about today. So let's pick it up in the gospel according to Mark chapter 1 and verse 14. Because here we want to find out what Jesus came preaching. This is Mark 1 and verse 14. When you're ready, good brother, go ahead. Now after that, John was put in prison. Mm -hmm. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Okay, it says in Jesus, it says Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel or the good tidings of the kingdom of God. Saying what? And saying, the time is fulfilled. Go ahead. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm -hmm. Repent ye and believe the gospel. He said, repent ye and believe the gospel. Okay, so now the gospel of what? That there's going to be a kingdom here on this earth. All right, let's go to, uh, let's go to, let's go to 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians. Because one thing about the gospel message is that, you know, it's not as if anybody could just inherit this kingdom. This is 1 Corinthians, and we'll pick it up in 1 Corinthians, uh, let's pick it up in 1 Corinthians, let's see, give me one second here. First Corinthians, the fifth chapter. And let's pick it up at, uh, I said first Corinthians, sixth chapter, excuse me. First Corinthians six, and let's pick it up at verse nine. <clears throat> And when you're ready, brother, go ahead and read. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Okay, so now he's talked about a kingdom. And he told you to repent. See, repent means to turn from your sin, right? Turn from how you've been living. Here he's telling those at, at, at Corinth, he says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So righteousness and unrighteousness is based upon the standard. The standard of what righteousness is, is Torah. It's the law, which is holy, just, and good. But he said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not what? Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Why? Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, mm -hmm. nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Go ahead. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, mm -hmm. nor extortioners Go ahead. shall inherit the kingdom of God. So if you engage in these things, you're not going to, if you're engaged in sin, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. He says, no, you're not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves and mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. The average Christians today, and they're being supported and buttressed by, by the uh, false ministers today that tell you you can have all the blessings of God, but you don't have to keep the law. Anybody that's telling you that you can sin, hey, what did Paul say? Be not deceived, right? Be not deceived. If Jesus is indeed your, uh, our example, what was he? He was without sin. He showed us how we're supposed to walk. So he said, no, you're not the end, righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived with neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves and mankind. Now, I know we've been told, just a side note, no, we've been told that homosexuality is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It is an abomination. 
Okay? According to the word of God. It's abomination yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Nothing will change. It will still be an abomination. And he's telling you, you're not going to uh, get into the kingdom. But the same thing, guess what? You know, because people want to have it their way. But the same thing for the adultery. You can be a heterosexual adulterer. Hey, that's, that's, that's wrong too. So, you know, you could look at somebody, he's he homosexual, you're an adulterer. And, and the adulterer, uh, and the idolater can look at both of y'all. Guess what? All y'all are going to be burning together. Right? Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. All y'all are going to be burning in the lake of fire. So what the Bible is telling you, if you want to inherit this kingdom, you have to walk upright. That's what you have to do. Let's pick it up Ephesians 5 and verse 1. When you're ready, brother, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and read. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. You have to follow God, he said, as dear children and walk in what? And walk in love. Go ahead. As Christ also had loved us. He said, walk in love, just like he loved us. And what did he do? And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. Okay, so be a follower of God, walk in love, but what should you not do? Verse 3. But fornication. In all uncleanness mm -hmm. or covetousness, Please. let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. He said, "Don't be a fornicator. Don't deal with uncleanness or covetousness. Don't let it be. Don't let it be once named among you when you become a saints." But what else does he say? Neither filthiness, go ahead, nor foolish talk, go ahead, nor jesting, mm -hmm. which are not convenient, mm -hmm. but rather giving of thanks. Go ahead. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Okay, so he's telling you that you, you have to, again, have a standard. It, it, it is peculiar that those, again, in Christianity, the Christian ministers in particular, would tell you you don't have to keep the law. But here, he's telling you if you're engaged in sin, you're not going to inherit the kingdom. Now, let's go, let's go to... Uh, Let's see. Let's go to let's go to Matthew. Well, actually, let's go to John. Let's read that. There. Well, let's go to John, the third chapter. See something else, another criteria to the end of the kingdom. John, the third chapter. And I believe you can pick it up at verse one. When you're ready, brother, you can go ahead and read. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, uh -huh. a ruler of the Jews. Go ahead. The same came to Jesus by night mm -hmm. and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art, that thou art a teacher come from God. Mm -hmm. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So here Nicodemus came to him by night. Now you can infer, it, I'm qualifying my statement. It is perhaps he came by night because being with Jesus wasn't a popular thing. But nevertheless, he said, it said, he said, he came by night and said it. And he said, he said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man could do these things, do these miracles, rather, that thou doest, except God be with him. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Truly, truly, I say unto thee. Go ahead. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, so you must be born again. So we understand that you have to have a certain moral standard. He told you when he came preaching the gospel, of the kingdom, he told you to repent, to turn. Then we see we see Paul telling those at Corinth and telling those at Ephesus, hey, you have to have a standard. If you're dealing in idolatry and fornication and adultery and homosexuality, you are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And here Jesus tells you what? That he says, except a man be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What does that mean? Verse 4. Because Nicodemus was certainly confused. Go ahead. Nicodemus saith unto him, uh -huh. How can a man be born when he is old? Uh -huh. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So now he said, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? I always say, Don't try it. It's not going to work. Verse 5. He's going to explain it to him. Go ahead. Jesus answered, 
Verily, verily, I say unto thee, mm -hmm. except a man be born of water uh -huh. and of the spirit, Go ahead. he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water, he must be born of the water and of the spirit. Now, let's keep reading. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Go ahead. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Uh -huh. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Mm -hmm. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. And that's how you are when you're born of the Spirit. Let's hold our finger here and just show you an example of this. We are in Give me one second here. We're in the book of let's go to John. The uh, let's see, twenty twentieth chapter, and he talked about one that's been born of the spirit. Let's pick it up at John twenty, and let's pick it up at verse nineteen. You ready, brother? Go ahead. Then the same day at evening. Being the first day of the week, Go ahead. when the doors were shut, when uh -huh. the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, mm -hmm. came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Okay, so let's go back to John 3. Because it didn't say that he opened the door. He didn't open the door. He just appeared in the midst of them. That's the kind of body. That's a, he had a spiritual body. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians real quick. I know we're going to go back to John. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. And let's pick it up uh, in verse uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse uh, 39. When you're ready, brother, go ahead. All flesh is not the same flesh, uh -huh. but there is one kind of flesh of men, mm -hmm. another flesh of beast, another of fishes, mm -hmm. and another of birds. Go ahead. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. So there are some earthly bodies, and then there are some heavenly bodies. That's what celestial is having. Terrestrial is earthly. Go ahead. But the glory of the celestial is one, uh -huh. and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Let, let's skip down to verse 44. When you're ready, brother, go ahead. It is sown a natural body. It is raised to spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Okay, so there's a spiritual body. With the spiritual body, hey, you can come into a room and not, and not open the door. Or you can shine like the sun. You have no limitations. So now let's go back to John 3. Because that's what he was saying. That which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. I'm in verse 8 now. The wind bloweth whether it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So it's every one that is born of the Spirit. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said verse unto Verse 9, excuse me. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, mm -hmm. How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Go ahead. Art thou a master of Israel and mm -hmm. knowest not these things? You're supposed to know. You're a master in Israel. You don't know this? Go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh -huh. we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. So he said, we speak of what we know, and you still won't accept it. So now, just a little recap. We understand that Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. We understand that you have to live a certain way to inherit the kingdom. And we understand that flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom because the kingdom is eternal. All right. This is an everlasting kingdom that's going to be set up on this on this earth. Let's go to Luke now. Now let's go to Luke 1. We're in Luke chapter 1. And we'll pick it up at verse 31. Luke 1 and verse 31. And now here, this is the annunciation of, of the birth of, of Christ. This is uh, the angel tells Mary, Gabriel tells Mary what's going to happen. Let's see what it says here. Go ahead. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb mm -hmm. and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Now what's he going to do? He shall be great mm -hmm. and shall be called the son of the highest. 
And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Oh, yeah. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Okay, so now he's going to sit on the throne of his father David. Remember Joseph, right? His stepfather, if you will. Right? He went, he went, uh, he, if you look at his lineage, it goes back to David. Okay, so it says he's going to sit on the throne of his father David. So he's going to establish his, his kingdom on this earth. And he's going to sit on his throne. Now, what's the significance of Jerusalem? Let's go to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Because when you look at a kingdom, you can just base some basic things. Every, if you look at rulership, everybody has a king, everybody has a or some leader, everybody has a place that is that is a central place for government. Okay, and then the question of how you establish that kingdom, we'll get to that. But Matthew the fifth chapter, and let's pick it up at verse five. When you're ready, brother, you can go ahead and read. Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew chapter five and verse thirty. Uh, 35. When you ready? Oh, verse 34. Let's read it too. When you ready, brother, go ahead. But I say unto you, mm -hmm. swear not at all, mm -hmm. neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Okay, so he was telling you here how to look at the law. He said, but I say unto you, fear not at all, neither by heaven, nor by it. Uh, it says, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither by the earth. Why? For it is his footstool. Not for it is his footstool. Neither by what? Neither by Jerusalem. Neither by Jerusalem or that city of peace. Now, why didn't he say swear? You shouldn't swear by uh, the city of peace. For it is a city of of the great king. Mm. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head. That's good. He said, nor by the earth, for it is the foot. It is his footstool. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Who is the great king? That's Jesus. That's where he's going to establish his throne at. Let's go to John the 18 chapter. Because the question becomes, well, is this, is this going to be a, there's going to be a uh, kingdom on this earth. How do I become a part of it? And how is, that's the question we need to ask ourselves. And here, how is it going to come about? Just like any other kingdom. When you look at the history of man and you see the rise of kingdoms, you had those that would come and would impose their will and authority on the world and take the kingdom. This is what the Lord is going to do. John, the 18th chapter and verse 33. When you're ready, good brother, go ahead and read. Then Pilate entered the judgment hall again uh -huh. and called Jesus mm -hmm. and said unto him, mm -hmm. Art thou the king of the Jews? So he asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? What did, they, what did Jesus respond? And Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, mm -hmm. Am I a Jew? Mm -hmm. Thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Go ahead. And Je Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. Go ahead. If my kingdom were of this world, what would happen? then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Okay, so he said, If it were time for my kingdom, then would my servants fight. There'd be some fighting going on if it were time for my kingdom. See, he, he was born to be king, but he's also to be born to be uh, a lamb. That's why John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. Okay? Let's go to Revelation, because it said, If it were time for my kingdom, then will my servants fight. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. So we've seen the criteria of how to get in this kingdom. We see, we see. The king, we see, we see the uh, capital, and then we see how it's going to be established. He says, "Then will my servants fight? It will time for my kingdom." Let's pick it up at uh, Revelation, the nineteenth chapter, and we can pick it up at verse eleven. When you ready, brother? Go ahead. And I saw heaven open, mm -hmm. and behold, a white horse, mm -hmm. and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, mm -hmm. and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Mm, so he's judging and making war. He's coming back. He said, if it were time for my kingdom, then will my servants fight. Let's keep reading. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Go ahead. And on his head were many crowns. Mm -hmm. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Mm. And his name is called the word of God. Speaking to all the killing that he's going to do at that time. What verse you have, brother? Verse 14. Verse 14. Um, that's good. That's good. So we see he's coming back with an army to establish his authority on this earth. Now he's going to establish he's going to establish a kingdom, and it's going to be not like today. It's going to be 
peace. Let's go to Isaiah the 11th chapter. Isaiah the 11th chapter, here we can see what it's like in this kingdom. Isaiah the 11th chapter and verse 6. When you're ready, brother, go ahead and read. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, mm -hmm. and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Go ahead. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. Mm -hmm. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones to, shall lie down together. Mm -hmm. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Go ahead. And the sucking, suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. And the winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. So we're talking about total peace at this time, right? Something that we don't, as a species, really don't know anything about. All right, but now let's keep reading. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Mm -hmm. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So everybody's going to know about the Lord. All right, let's read one more verse. Go ahead. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to it shall the Gentiles see, and his rest shall be glorious. Okay. So he said his rest shall be glorious. That's the Shabbat or the rest that, that's going to be established on this earth for a thousand years. That's the that's in his kingdom. Now, one more place. Let's go to Matthew, the sixth chapter, because he told you to pray something. And notice he didn't tell you to pray to go to heaven. He told you to pray something else. This is Matthew, the sixth chapter and verse um, Matthew Matthew 6, and we'll pick it up in verse 9. When you're ready, brother, go ahead. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Uh -huh. Our Father which art in heaven, go ahead. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Give That's us good. this. That's good. So he says, and after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Then he says, thy kingdom come, come where to this earth, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So he told you to pray for this kingdom. So just to recap what we've discussed, we found out that, you know, you have to have a particular standard and you have to repent if you want to get this kingdom. Well, how is this kingdom going to come about? Well, we know the king is Jesus. He's going to establish his kingdom here on this earth, headquartered in Jerusalem through warfare. And he tells you that if you want to inherit the kingdom, hey, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. You must be born again. And also, he told you to pray for this kingdom. Not pray that you're going to go to heaven. Lord, please let me go to heaven so I can have, we were talking about, so I can have some, some wings. That's not, that's not biblical at all. Um, so what you want to do is do what's necessary on this earth in a righteous capacity so that you may gain salvation. It's always my prayer that you are edified.